YouTube, what's going on? Horse Racing Gamer here. Welcome back to Galb Racer <clears throat> 2004. Um, we uh, had successful breeding. Uh, I still can't get over <laughs> what, how that went and how just every time we decided to put a breeding pair together, <laughs> it's just saying, <laughs> I don't think that game, <laughs> like, as if that's gonna stop us from doing what we want to do, you know. It's just it's so it's still so funny to me because it's like I, I could care less what the game is saying. You guys, us together as a community, we decided these are the horses we thought were the best of what we currently have available, and that's who we were gonna use for breeding. So regardless of what the game said, we were going to do it, you know. And the fact that all of them worked except for the one that didn't need to work at all, and I'm completely fine with not working. It's just like. It is why I say, play the game how you want to play the game, because it's just, you know, like, you have that freedom. You do. Whether you believe it or not, we all have that freedom to make those decisions that we want to make, regardless of what the game is trying to advise us to do or not. You know what I mean? It's, they didn't create a perfect game. They created a very fun, enjoyable, long-lasting game that we can play for a long time, but Galb Racer is by no means perfect. It'd be weird for anybody to say this is a perfect game. Perfect horse racing game. Now, could you consider it the best in your own um, your own opinion? Yes, I think that's perfectly fine. But, you know, every game has its issues, and this one is not exempt from that list. It's just funny. It just that that is a thing in breeding. I, I don't know. It's just the biggest laugh to me. And especially because that's happened so much in our breeding of him saying, I don't think they're going to be compatible. And then it ends up working anyway. So now it's almost just like a running gag. It's just like, okay, it's probably going to work just because you're saying that. But regardless, we're kicking off today in an open with Major River. I liked how she felt in her first debut. Uh, she actually broke her maiden. Well, no, she didn't. She ran in the dirt race. And then she, well, you guys get the point. Her second race, we ended up getting... A very decisive victory, and I liked the way that, uh, you know, things felt with her. So, I guess she'll probably be really strong um, over time as she continues to develop, and I expect to win with her quite a bit. She's really easy to work with. Um, to say I'm surprised and shocked, I can't because, of course, she's supposed to be a really good horse. It's just like the AI are just awful with her in 2003. They just never win on her, at least in my game. So that probably tainted my expectations a bit of what she would be like. But come to find out, even years off of her prime, uh, she's actually um, a solid horse. And like I said, she gave me no issues and she had a really nice uh, finishing there. So... I'm curious to see what she'll do as a dirt horse for us in the future. <laughs> you know, to think, like I said, I have a completely different view of her in 2003, but in this game, it's like a whole new book, you know? <clears throat> whole new book, whole new chapter. All right. Just catching up on some, um, some racing from Aqueduct, Oakland Park. Oakland Park. I felt like I said that weird for any of you that pay attention to those tracks. And, um... Look like we have, might have some surprise fillies this year. I think there's some pretty quick fillies to keep uh, track of. And uh, we're going to get squeezed here. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, Major Ebert, gotta go. There's nothing I could do. That was, like, as fast as she could move from that point. So, um... And we're supposed to finish 10th. So, actually, any result. And, yeah, she fights really well here. I know once her stats get better, like, it's going to be a lot of winning. Are you kidding me? <laughs> the AI are so rude in this game. And that could have been such a better performance if we didn't have that horse come over and completely block our lane off when she got mad. She was like, ah, you're slowing us down. And once we were at probably, what, 3.7? That, that kind of, I think put a damper on any chance that she had that certainly could have been a top five top three finish but nonetheless again another good performance i think from major river just in regards to just getting her in the right uh window so yeah i'm excited to see how she'll develop over time we're moving on here to a grade two it's eight furlongs with miss vapor wave 
She is the favorite. I decided to drop her in class just because of that last race I had with her, which I felt a little bit, um, a little bit off, and I didn't get the results I wanted. Flash points here, uh, Simple Moon. So still competitive field she'll be running with, and uh, just want to again make sure I have her dialed in, make sure I get her comfortably towards the front, depending on the pace. Still don't know her speed figure. That's annoying. And that's really the only thing I need to know. I just want to see how fast she actually is. I can assume with the 75 staying rating, she her speed has got to be there as well. So this should be an easy win. We are the favorite. We have no choice but to get the W. But again, just want to make sure I get back in the right rhythm with her. So guys, in our recent live stream that I did with God Racer 3, we were talking about horse racing and especially Japanese horse racing and why I feel like there's a lack of promotion and awareness around it because there's some really good horses over there that just nobody knows about if you're not actually paying attention to the worldwide scene. And we got to trace back to some of the in-game horses and how they really were in, in reality. We got to see Arctic Crop, who was uh, a very strong horse in Japan, I think back in... What year was it? I can't remember his year. Sometime in the 90s. And same thing for Frugal Lark. Frugal Lark was actually the Japanese horse of the year, I think in 1996 or 97. Don't quote me on those years. It's one of the two. And um, that means at that point she would have been, I think, four or five years old. Because she was born in 93. So the real life Frugal Lark was actually a very, very strong, competent Japanese horse in the 90s and i think it's cool that obviously a lot of these horses are based off of real life horses those from different countries we know secretariat's in here obviously a lot of them but um it was just cool to see just some of the history of some of the best in-game horses we all know frugal lark arts of crop are considered some of the best domestic grade one horses in the first gout racer game which is gout racer three so to see that they were actually uh really strong in real life in japan during their actual tenor is, is pretty cool. And we bounce back with it went here with Miss Vaporwave in a grade two. It was close at the end, but it was never in doubt. She kept strong and that's what I wanted to make sure I could do with her. So we'll be moving on and try to put her in a grade one next time around. But like I said, um yeah, just kind of seeing some of the history of some of the horses. It was just really cool because, again, Japanese horse racing in general is not very highlighted, especially like in North America. I just there There's not hardly any coverage on their big grade ones, and they have some really big ones with some really special horses. Um, it's just it, it's cool. Like I like horse racing from all over, from different countries, uh, different regions, and I'm just surprised that it seems here, I was saying in that live stream, that Japanese horse racing just doesn't get the – quite the same coverage and promotion as like maybe even horse racing in the uk does they talk about the royal ascot every year they don't do that for some of japan's big races but for what it's worth japan has its own really big market so maybe they just don't feel the need to do that you know but little vixen she's up here in a cherry cup quickly switching gears favorite is pink amber ray babes here blues duo i mean it's a field we have to wash out for but um it's a good test for little vixen for these three-year-old philly gals trying to establish themselves and uh she's close to her peak so this is a race we should be able to win don't know what her stamina still is but she's got decent enough power uh she's fast enough she comes from diamond plant out of pink gemstone she does have stretch burst so if we keep her in that fight maybe that last furlong half a furlong she'll get an extra boost which can hopefully help her win today but the real frugal lark um i'll try to find pictures and maybe just post them if i can she was of course beautiful as she is but she was extremely lean really light on her toes like she was an awesome horse to look at and um gosh it just it makes me want to learn about more of the in-game horses and just to see how they actually were in real life can't always find videos of those races but I, like i said there's still photos of how the horses looked when they were in the post parade or in the paddock and gosh frugal was so lean man she was an extremely lean philly and mare during her time and um yeah she didn't pass away unfortunately uh well she passed away uh i think within the last last 10 to 7 years so i'm kind of uh disappointed with myself that i didn't have the chance to see if there was anything about her while she was still around and maybe there still is i just haven't done the research but it was really cool to just to see some of my favorite horses how they actually looked 
at that point in time. And like I said, Frugal was lean. Arctic Crop was a beautiful looking dude. And Frugal actually wore blinkers for a short time. Um, she didn't like in this game. She never has them uh, has a hood or blinkers at all. But for a short time during her racing career, Frugal Lark actually had uh, blue and yellow uh, blinkers. I forgot her name. I'll have to look it up. I had it in my phone. Um, a lot of those horses are were based. Their actual names are based off of uh, these Japanese characters. I think from an actual horse racing anime. Regardless, um, yeah, Frugal Arc was absolutely beautiful. So we're gonna get little Vixen going now. We get her going now, and she's a little bit wild here. Got to get her. She lost the head to head. She thinks she did, but no, she's still in there. She's still in the fight. Little Vixen thought she lost the head-to-head. -head. She's going to go ahead and bounce back for a long left to go. She ran 10-5 in that last fraction. The 12 is closing. The 12 is closing. She's going to struggle up this hill. And whoever that is may just get us at the end. What an effort from Little Vixen. But I think we just, just got pit there at the line. And unfortunately, that's probably... Yeah, Pink Amber just got us. Man, what an effort. And that's the second time. That's the second time with her that, uh, unfortunately... I kind of had her in, in that, not in the ideal position. I lose that head-to-head, -head and it does stop her momentum a bit. Gave us B on the spurt, and that's why. It was the same thing with the last race, so. It's very clear. She's really a horse. I have to get clearly in front by at least a length, a length and a half. Because if she, I mean, yeah, she hits that that head-to-head, -head and it, it's, it definitely affects her, which is... It's, it's quite odd from a pink gemstone horse, isn't it? We haven't really had that be an issue. And, of course, not even from Diamond Plan. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, like... Uh, ah, 48 heart rating. I mean, it's not great. It's just that we haven't had horses really be affected by that. And they want her in the Golden Oaks. I mean, I, I still don't know your stamina. I don't know if that's a good race to put you in or not for the distance. Um, still think she's capable of winning a grade one, so I might go ahead and send her overseas. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to run her in the Britain 1000 Gs. Uh, she's not a dirt horse, so running her in the Oaks, that would be nice, but we actually have three-year-old fillies that I think could run that. Like Major River... If she was at her prime, she could run in the Oaks. Not to say she... I don't even know if she would qualify for it. She does. I mean, you know what? I'm okay with... Wait. Yeah, I'm actually okay with running her in that race. Because more than likely, we're going to have goal of like finishing in last place. Which means we'll hit our goals no matter what. I'd be surprised if they put any sort of remote favoritism towards her finishing above like 10th. Because it's usually a pretty stacked field, so... We'll go ahead and toss her in that, see if we can get a good result. Just continue to try to build a good record with her. I mean, I've hit her goals three for three. She's nowhere near the top five, but that's going to be expected with a horse with her growth type. Yeah, um, gosh, Little Vixen, she really does have to be in front. If she's not, then she's probably going to struggle to uh, get that win. Oh, I'm supposed to be looking for somebody, aren't I? Apologize if you guys hear background noise. There's people like moving things in, and they're just making as much noise as possible. I used to work for a moving company. You can get things done and not have to make so much noise. You need strong guys or strong whoever on the job, but <laughs> gosh, Central Marlin. What game do we try him out in? I can't remember if it was 2003 initially or maybe 2001. Oh, you're a very good friend to me, but the challenge does not benefit me and. I don't even know if it benefits you. Like, what do you get? <laughs> AI challenges. If they beat us, what do they get? Any favoritism? Maybe. Sorry, guys. Just texting. Crazy Hunter's up in the open, 11 furlongs, and uh, yeah, I suppose he's actually ready, or excuse me, she's ready, um, I'm thinking of Best Hunter, I always, always think of Best Hunter, when I just see 
hunter and a horse's name. I don't know why he's instinctively the first horse I always think to. But, um... I mean, technically speaking, she's ready for grade ones. But I want to make sure, again, I have her dialed in. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see how she does. And with I'm being a full start, and I am going to, uh, well, probably send her to the front. Again, she can run as a proceeder, but um, still probably best to have her in front, I would think. <clears throat> as long as the pace is not too hot. Like, if I feel like we're, we have a, a reasonable distance ahead, then I'll keep her in front. If I feel like whoever is challenging me wants to run 10 lanes ahead of the rest of the field, then fortunately, because that triangle is shaded quite a bit in the proceeder position, I'll just go ahead and drop her back. I, I just I have no desire to do that on most horses, unless I know the horse can handle being out in front that far. Um, and we've had a couple, only a couple. I would say half a dozen tops that could handle being out in front, you know, eight, ten lanes out of the field and still finish strong and win. Butterfly Effect, to me, was one of those type of horses. Granted, I didn't really run her like that often, but if I had to, like, she was fine, you know? If somebody was really trying to challenge us, she had to stay in front. That was where her dominance came in, and sometimes we'd have her really far out there. She wasn't bothered. Same thing with Awesome Autumn. I think she's that same type of horse. So, we're neck and neck here with, uh... Wonderful Zero, who apparently doesn't have a chance to win, but I'm learning sometimes when the AI actually do put their horses this far up front, they have a chance. And maybe it's just a good day for them, so I'm not going to count that horse out. Okay, Crazy Hunter, still have plenty of go with her. Now we're going to get her moving. Number one, Love Tap, make sure she's there. For a long and a half left to go, let's see if she can drive and pull away. Furlong now left to go. Uphill. Can she handle it? Ten is still behind us. And that's going to be Tender Club trying to rally, but it looks like she's going to hold on. Good win for Crazy Hunter. Quite quite the uh, the energy exertion one. She is tired at the end, but she holds on to get it done at 11 Furlong. So I wonder if that's a bit a bit of a distance reach for her. So yeah, the blessing of the spirit, good stuff. That's exactly what I figured. So we are now up here in the Azalea Cup with Soy Conquistador. Now none of the three-year-old fillies yet. Have any of them won a grade one yet? As far as like our originals um, from that class. So I can keep the door. She did. She's won a grade one and eight. So she's looking for her second grade one. And uh, I got to be honest, I I was going to say they should give us favoritism. I haven't, didn't see a single horse in this field I think is better than her. So she's about a dollar and a half favorite over the two horse bright gate. And um, again, I'm not really impressed by anybody else in the field. She's really, really pretty solid from Diamond Plan out of Chasing Heart. She is the full blooded sister there of Joker's card. And um, her left side, except for that temper, is actually solid for where I, I would like her to be. A little bit more speed would go a long way. Still don't even know what the power rating is, which is kind of ridiculous. Yeah, the rest of the field, I mean, right, right a gate is still a good horse with a good power rating as well. Not quite the same distance. I mean, if we don't do this right, we could all, all by, by all means lose to that horse. But look, the field is really not that... Can it's a pretty weak Azalea Cup in comparison to most of the fields we usually get. So this is really our race to win. If I end up botching this, then joke's on me, joke's on me, shame on me, joke's on me. Here we go. The horses are on the track. So we'll, uh, yeah, we'll ultimately see how this goes. I think she's ready. I think she's ready. I think I know what I need to do with her. And hopefully get her her second grade one. Now she hasn't had quite the explosive pop-off. In fact, none of them from her group have. But 
some of them could still start to show those signs now. Excuse me, but she still has a long way to go to uh, achieve the level of success that her mother, Chasing Hearts, did. So that's kind of the benchmark always for my Phillies is just to be better than their mothers. Whatever their mothers did, they have to achieve that. If not, it doesn't mean we don't like the horse. It just means that's, I think, the um, the bar that needs to be set. You know, like for any foal that comes from Galaxy Star or Cleopatra, Butterfly Effect, they all... The goal is for them to be better than their mothers, but is that going to happen with every single one of them? I mean, probably not. A couple, I think, will obviously show that potential, and that's the goal. That will always be the goal. And the same goes for, the, for you know, the boys. Like, I always want my horses to be better than their parents, and I would say that probably happens 25 to 50% of the time as of now. Early game... You know, we used a, like Western Tiger's first initial crop. They none of them had, were better than him. Now he's, now the horses he's produced have I think eclipsed what he was able to do, and that takes nothing away from him. But it, it took a while. His first couple of years of horses, none of them ever got close to doing what he did. So that's always my goal: be better than the parents, no matter how good or bad they were. And you get Soy Conquistador rolling here. And she's got plenty of stamina left to go. We're going to run her off the turn. And down the stretch, we come in the Azalea Cup. A furlong and a half left to go. Last corner leader. Wanted to make sure I get that going. And Soy Conquistador finally showing us who she really is today. What an absolute run. And like I said, easy field. She's going to cruise on to win this Azalea Cup by at least half a dozen lengths. And that's an easy grade one victor for our girl. That's exactly what she needed to do. She comes from a great pedigree. I, I think of Diamond Plan and Chasing Hearts. And, um, yeah, she should be able to do that, honestly. Like I said, her mother was our first Hall of Fame horse. Chasing Hearts was where it really started for us to, I think, turn that page and then have Butterfly Effect, Cleopatra, Galaxy Star, Solo Rider, and all these good horses. Um, seven length winner over Social Road and uh, second favorite. Right at gate, finish all the way in 10th. Maybe I had some traffic, but great win there for Soy Conquistador. I will take that any day of the week. So now let's continue to try to build momentum. We hop to my project four-year-old filly, who is Shallow Light here, and she is seventh favorite. So still not quite ready for grade twos yet, as far as like being in the top three. Not saying we can't finish there, but clearly the game still thinks she's a ways off, which is fine. I wanted to see where she was, because we had been having... Pretty good results from grade threes and open. So I probably should still stick her to grade threes just to be safe. Or I could just really keep her in opens and just try to stack wins. She finally has a rating that hits uh, the 70s for the first time. As you can see, it's the power rating at 71. Like I said, uh, outside of that temper, her stats are pretty average. Like once another year and a half of development happens, um, It'd be nice to see... The thing is, she's not going to be really fast. I mean, she's probably going to top out at like 75 speed. Her stamina should be close to that as well. So if she has at least a decent speed and stamina figure, she'll probably be better suited in more longer distance races. And obviously you can see she's a 9 furlong to 14 furlong horse. So we could still have some success with her. She has good abilities that are going to help. They have been helping her so far. Um, I just think she still needs more development, so... Let's see what I can do with her today in this grade two. Her biggest challenge and test of her career so far. My horses are in the gate. These tracks are beautiful as well. Kind of back to the Japanese horse racing thing. They are extremely beautiful. Like the amount of work and and effort they take into making their tracks not just obviously great for the horse racing aspect, but just the spectator perspective as well. It's why I think it's it's such a cool market to get into if you're not familiar with it, you know? Like, how these tracks look in the game. This is really how these tracks actually look in Japan. You know, the grandstands are really that big. You see these beautiful trees. You see the background and the mountains. It's, it's, it's really, really just a different, a cool and different, um, just kind of aesthetic for horse racing, so... Um, if you want to get into it, you can always... There's a channel. Now, granted, most of their videos are officially in Japanese. I don't think to check if they actually had subtitles on. Um, but the JRA, if you search that, if you search JRA or JRA Horse Racing, you'll see their channel pop up as far as the official 
um, association is concerned. But if you can, if you're old enough to have a TBG account, of course you can stream the races there. So gotta get her rolling now. Let's see how she does in this grade too. Now she's got a pretty good start here, but I feel like the rest of the field's still gonna have a little bit more speed. She's fighting well though. She loses a head to head. She's still here though. She's still here in the fight. Top seven is our goal. We'll losing that head to head drop her out of that. And she's still fighting well. It's going to be close at the line. Really close. Ah, uh, we may have just got seventh. Sixth. Wow. Just held on. Just held on there. And I'm not upset with that. I think she fought as hard as she could. Losing that head-to-head -head obviously hurt her. Double S on the spurt. And that's kind of what I thought. I really felt I put her in the best position to have as strong of a race as possible. She's still developing. She's not quite ready for grade twos. Um, but that's a great effort. She hits her goal, so I'll know to drop her back to grade threes and opens, probably still for another eight to nine months. Maybe she'll improve better to start doing grade twos by then. But in all honesty, I keep forgetting with these type of horse. <sighs> Shut up. Go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. And like, we haven't even been on the favorites. What are you talking about? Um, <laughs> gosh, it's so annoying. Why do they put <laughs> some of the things they put in the game actually annoy me, if you can't tell. And. Um, I was talking about Shallow Light, right? Um, she's B-ranked, and she's probably going to be... I don't know if they'll consider her an S-ranked horse. She's probably just going to be an A-ranked horse at best, unless I really do well with her to make her S-ranked. As you can see, like I said, she's still developing. She has great abilities. Um, it's kind of a bummer we lost that head-to-head, -head, because we were clear in front by about a length and a half to two lengths, and then the rest of the field just started, slowly started to... To close in on us and there's nothing i could do i just think those horses are probably a little bit faster so i wonder as a front runner do i have to keep her out further in front maybe that way she doesn't come close to losing a head-to-head -head. like if maybe she needs to be two and a half lengths out in front instead that way those horses have a little bit harder work and granted her stamina is not great right now at 59 but it's going to hit 70 when she's at her peak which means she does have endurance hence like i said the longer range so maybe i should be running her out a little bit further in front She's got a 71 power rating, which is good, so that helps. Yeah, second wind, strong heart, and pursuit. Those are great abilities, so it's like... I probably just need to keep her out a bit further in front. They want her another grade, too. I'm not going to do that. And actually, I'm going to try to look for a little bit of a longer distance race, if I can. Not really seeing them right now. Like, here's grade threes at 10. I think a grade three uh, 10 furlongs against the Phillies in July. It's a little bit of a layoff, but I think that that will probably work for her. Um, so I can keep the door now moving to her. She officially moves up to S ranked with her second grade one victory. She's actually having a fantastic career. Six wins and seven starts. <laughs> I always forget I'm doing this well with her. Like I actually have, I lost one race with her and for whatever reason, I felt like that kind of bothered me more than it probably should have. But actually she's been on a winning streak as of late. I, I don't know why I thought maybe I lost a race with her recently. I haven't. So she's she's right on the money, and they want her in the Golden Oaks. And with her stamina at 73 and everything else where it's at, yeah, I think I think this is the path for her right now. We can always move her up in class. And to me, she'll be good enough to still race after she peaks. So um, Major uh, River will be in the Louisville Oaks, a.k.a. the Kentucky Oaks. Crazy Hunter, got to make sure I get you fired off. And, um, yeah, ended up winning that race really nicely. She's got two wins out of her four starts with a grade one. And she won that, um, yeah, the fact that she actually won that grade one. I should probably be looking. Louisville Derby. Why not, right? Why not put her in the Louisville Derby? She is a dirt horse after all. And her stats, I think, aren't quite where they need to be. But I... Psh, I don't know, man. Crazy. She's she's a good horse so far, so I'm willing to take a chance putting her in the derby. I mean, there's nobody else we can run in it anyway, so might as well be her. Um. So yeah, that's what we got going on here. Uh, actually, we haven't I haven't checked on the little ones in quite a while. Let's go ahead and see how they're developing, especially the two-year-olds are going to be hitting. Oh well, I the two-year-olds are hitting the track. They've already left. Um. But let's see how. This group is developing an east side band still five star potential, four star power from Diamond Plant out of Tigris or Stone. You look at the pedigree, there's Western Tiger in there, Pink Gemstone, Arctic Crop. Yeah, she she should be all that she's worth. We have two horses at four stars, classy and smart from Golden Boy out of Free Fear. 
Um, Western Tiger in this pedigree, Aunt B, Lee's Gold. I expect nothing less from her. And then another Golden Boy foal here. First down dash. This filly from Golden Boy out of Black Ruby. Four-star power with her four-star future. And again, pretty much this. In fact, our, her and Classy and Smart are actually full sisters. Or no. Half-sisters. Half-sisters with like this pretty much the same pedigree. Yeah, they're actually yeah, half-sisters for them. Any other siblings here? Yeah, so half-sisters for uh, Storm Owl. And then this uh, filly, Classy and Smart. And then this filly, First Down Dash. So those three girls are all half siblings. And she has a four star power here for Stormy uh, Storm Owl from Golden Boy out of Chasing Hearts. And we see this pedigree as well. Um, pretty solid. Arctic Crops in there. Lee's Gold, Western Tiger, Ant B. Diamond Planet, Toxic Blonde. This horse should be very fast. I just, I hope the stamina is better than Jaden's champion. I hope that this horse doesn't come out that way. I'm kind of worried about that with like any sprinters from Diamond Plan. It just seems like they're getting really bad stamina for whatever reason. Um, Rapid Blade from Long Live Bolero out of Butterfly Effect. Four star um, power development. I think this horse is going to be okay. Genuinely. Again, Western Tiger is in there. Irish Fleet. Uh, Great Bolero, obviously. Long Live Bolero. Night Breeze. So I, I think... The mother side is really going to strengthen this pedigree and finally give me the horse I've been wanting from the Bolero line for as long as he's been retired. We haven't had anybody quite get to his level. This former opera on Moon Trapper uh, Fall Moon a Little Mine should be interesting. And then we have Point Black from Diamond Plan out of Toxic Blonde uh, that we looked at earlier. But like I said, hope she doesn't get bad da uh, bad stamina. So that's. That group there for the yearlings. Now let's look at the ones that were just born. All still at one star. We have a fairy singer and moon trapper foal here. Uh, we have a gentle house free fear filly. We have a fairy singer butterfly effect colt, and really excited for him. Should be gosh, I just I can't wait to see what butterfly uh, effects uh, her foals are like. Gentle house chasing hearts here, a colt, and then another colt. Nervous flower from gentle house are real happy. So. Those are the little ones, and then we'll actually see who has our horses that'll be hitting the track. Let me actually save. Um, it's been about half an hour. Uh, we'll see who has our two-year-olds that'll be debuting this year. Um, I remember I used to be so worried about that because I had bad relationships with, like, who? Pink, Cook, and, like, maybe somebody else, Silver. Now we have really, I mean, we're close with six, I think, out of the eight trainers, friendly with one of them and then still like let's let's actually see so yeah we're still distanced from Frank, but we're close with everybody else and then friendly with silver which that'll probably move the close uh, as well so like now i don't have to worry about who's actually getting my horses because finally i have horses from all of them that i can actually ride with semi semi um semi diligence here and um not be completely struggling and that's mainly because I've had more original horses from these trainers that I feel better in rhythm with, as opposed to their in-game horses that maybe I'm just not the best with. Um, bet on me. So Nazawa's only going to get one of my two-year-olds this year. He's going to get the two-year-old filly bet on me from former opera Adelie's Gold, and there she is. So she'll be with Nazawa. I haven't had any bad horses from from or with Nazawa in years. I mean, I he's really my favorite trainer in the game right now so formal opera leaves gold uh she should be fantastic and it's the first time we're gonna start to see formal opera foals on the track so uh, this should be a good year for that and you see who nizawa has as well all the horses that i i really enjoy the way they ride mr vaporwave she's fun joker's card and burning wind we go down to shiba shiba's gonna get the two-year-old colt delta dream and we see who he currently has valley king sedate dancer only had one win and uh I think, yeah, I lost her. Um, and then Soy Conquistador. So a little bit hit and miss. Delta Dream. Here's our two-year-old Colt. He's from former opera out of Pink Gemstone. Should be fantastic. Uh, Pink has been very reliable for us so far as a broodmare, so I would expect nothing less. Cook. Cook is going to get Native Spirit, and you see she has all the girls and Solo Rider. I didn't realize Cook had Solo Rider. I wasn't paying attention, but you see she has our two best girls, Galaxy Star, Cleopatra, 
Flying Autumn, who I lost and um, had to give up on from Blues Breeze out of Awesome Autumn. And as you can see, she's still developing. She's still developing. She could kick up, but the fact that she's still E-ranked as a five-year-old, yeah, she's not going to amount to nothing. So it is what it is. But we, she also cooked here as Solo Rider, Shallow Light, Mythical. Unfortunately, I lost. And um, Mythical actually got a win, her second win with Ross not too long ago. In fact, two weeks ago. Just could not figure her out in time. So I'm, a, I'm of course, bummed about that. I thought she would have been exciting for Moonbe out of Lee's Gold. But, yeah, I just could not figure her out quite in time. Native Spirit, though, the two-year-old here. Two-year-old Philly from He Stargazing out of Chasing Heart. She should be a fun one. I'm curious how she'll work. And, um, yeah, I don't think she'll be a bad horse. Uh, Riviera is actually going to get two of the Phillies here. He already has Little Vixen. We're doing fine with her. September Sky, the same thing. And um, he's going to get Bay City and Red Wings. Bay City is my project Philly from He Stargazing out of, you see it down there, Moon Trapper. So, again, really excited to see what more Moon Trapper foals can do. And then here we have this two-year-old Philly Red Wings from Silver Bullet out of Awesome Autumn. This was the, the last uh, horse we got from Silver Bullet. So, Hopefully she should be a she should have turf and dirt preference. Um, in fact, if we even look at her pedigree here, as you can see she's got sedate ruler in there. She's got it's a ghost, so she should be able to be decent on turf and dirt. I'm assuming they'll. I feel like they're going to give her turf preference, but maybe she'll be a really good dirt horse. That is obviously what I'm hoping, and uh, with Ozzy Autumn as her mother, I do sincerely hope that it does boost her performance. Parks here. He only has vivid eyes. We're four for eight with her. And now he'll have our two-year-old Philly Bolero's gal from Long Live Bolero out of Irish Fleet. And we see the pedigree here of Long Live Bolero. We got a couple out of him. I don't know about this horse. Irish Fleet, for the most part, has been successful. But, you know, not every horse we've gotten from her has turned out to be as good as I thought. So that'll be an interesting one. Pink has nobody. Uh, Silver has no one, and then Franck has no one. So it's just going to be Nazawa, Sheba, Cook, Riviera, and Parks with our two-year-olds that will be hitting the track this year. I'm excited. I'm excited. I think uh, things should go pretty well, hopefully. <laughs> uh, no challenges, Thompson. No challenges. No challenges. I'm just, I don't know. I'm not in the mood. Is there any, is there any serious horse I'm missing from, like, not doing these challenges? If there is, let me know. There's some really, really crazy, crazy good horse. I just, I genuinely don't know, and I've just never, I feel like the, the, the really good horses I've wanted come from unlocking them in different ways that don't revolve around the jockey challenges, the rival challenges. So I'm like, the horses I want, I, that I know that I want, I should say, don't even come from those challenges. So I just, I have no desire to do them. Not to mention, like, it just gives you an extra goal to have to hit. And what if you perform well enough to finish where you need to be, but then the AI jockey was on the favorite who just kind of still beat you, smokes you in the end, whatever. Well, you don't complete that goal and you can possibly lose your horse. Like, why would I do that? Burning Wind is up in a grade three. He's still fun to work with, so I'm dropping him in class. And I'll race him in... Great threes as long as I can. Let's just see how many wins he can get. Because, again, we've seen with Moon Trapper how that can still be successful when it comes to breeding. So I'm curious if I wanted to use a burning win for a dirt line, what it could do. Because I love the horse. I love the way the horse rides. It works. And he has good leg type, too. You can run him anywhere from as a closer to a proceeder. Can't say that about every horse. So getting that type of leg type on a horse with better stats, that's going to help us a lot. If I decided to use that as a dirt horse, depending on the conditions of the race. I mean, personally, I like my dirt horses out in front. Depending on, you know what, it really depends on the horse, actually. Now I think about it, some of my favorite dirt horses have been closers, but some of them have been really strong front runners. Um, Proceeder is good, but I, I would prefer for them to be out in front, just because the tracks are a lot tighter and... Um, yeah, you don't have as much time to make up ground if you don't get the right jump. I feel like with most of the turf courses in this game, there's a wider turn three, turn four for you to make your move. Yeah, you may have to run a little deeper in the stretch, but, like, you have more time. On dirt tracks, you kind of, most of these tracks at least, you bend these, um, these last two turns pretty quickly there. So if you're not already in the right position to strike, it might be a hard day for you. 
See, for, I like Burning Wind, his major preference is Proceeder. I haven't ran him as Proceeder, and we still get two sevens from running on basically at the mid. All right, get him going now. And let's see how he handles it. No Rebo. He's going to kick off. Furlong and a half. He gets last corner leader, but he doesn't have the speed to keep up. He's supposed to finish 10th today. Keep that in mind. So this is a horse that's well, well beyond his prime. Still fighting well enough to be finishing here. Probably going to be like a top five, maybe even lower than that. As the rush of horses come along, it's actually going to be, it looks like 6th or 7th. Oh, man. He's still so fun to work with. Like, gosh, if he still had the speed he really needed, it would have been an awesome dirt horse. See, perfect race. Like, I can still do well enough with him to finish well, but... If winning a grade three is going to be hard on the dirt, gosh, can I even put him in opens? <laughs> I'm curious. Like, at the whole point of dropping him in class is to still try to win races, but if we can't win grade threes on the dirt, I may have to retire him soon. So I'll see if, you know, maybe I can run him in an open on the dirt, if that makes things any different. Vivid Eyes, our three-year-old filly, she's got quite the test. I decided to try her out in the GWS turf. Um, she's up here in the second cup, not the favorite. She's uh, behind Pure Ruin and Prime Colony, who's going to be a tough horse to beat with NGO in the saddle there. Um, Vivid Eyes is from Vivid Legend on a Moon Trapper. I decided to go ahead and toss her into this race just because we have the other girls doing other things. This GWS turf is still wide open. I, I don't know who I'm going to main to try to win it because there's a lot of horses I think have the potential. So as opposed to just picking one, I'm going to give them... Try to give them all a pretty fair chance, depending on how I feel with their current form. So Vivid Eyes decided to toss her in here. Stamina is almost at 70. Her speed's only 71. She's certainly not the fastest in the field. She has a decent power rating and a decent enough heart rating, where if I keep her in the right place, she might be competitive. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how she does. Again, another Moon Trapper horse. The second one on track from Moon Trapper. Been doing well with her, so... She's still looking for her first grade one. So winning this would be really big time. Another Moon Trapper foal. Winning a grade one. Kind of right off the jump. And yeah, this would be big for her, man. This would be really big. She's the third favorite. So we have a chance. Western Tiger with the record here. So this is all for the taking. Let's see how she does. Almost a perfect start. We'll take it. And she's okay with it. We are off in the second cup in the beginning of the GWS turf. And it's actually a pretty good start here for Vivid Eyes. Go ahead and move her. She's actually in the lead right now. I don't want her there, but I I hope somebody else would go for the lead. No, is there no front runners in this field? No front runners. Wow. Well, okay, I guess this is what we're doing today. <laughs> Not a single horse wants to take the lead. Wow. Stay ahead, stay ahead, stay ahead. There we go. Just trying to find the right rhythm for her because, like, if nobody wants to go for the lead. There's the eight. Pure Ruin finally decided to go ahead and take charge there. All right. So we're settled in pretty nicely here. I think this has been pretty ideal. I haven't had to work her too hard. And she's been responsive enough. Five furlongs to go. 24 temper, but she's, she's pretty mild-mannered considering. She's running nicely here. Okay, this is where the kind of get her right on the side of pure ruin. She's got the stamina to handle this, so I'm not worried about that. I'm just curious how her speed will be. No rebel today. A late charge from the 11, whoever that is. And they're in the home stretch. Okay, there she goes. We'll go ahead and send her on a run. We got to go now. And here we go. The race is on. 14 is closing. Vivid Eyes, she's out in front. 14 is still closing. Closing hard. And she only has 71 speed. There's not much I can do in regards to that. Prime Colony is going to fly right by. But you know what? She's going to do well enough to hopefully still finish third. No, maybe fourth. Did we get third or not? Ah, she gets fourth. Man, just lost it there at the end. She's still developing, not quite at her peak. So, uh, Prime Colony, too hard to beat be on the spurt yeah like ugh. don't know what else i could have done differently maybe holding her 
could have benefited her a little bit more. But again, she has 71 speed. Like, she's not going to be running horses down at the stretch. So I feel like that's a horse you kind of have to send out a little bit early and just try to take advantage of her endurance to hold off because she's not running anybody down with 71 speed. So um, I think I overwhipped her at the end, which is probably what that, that, that rating would have reflected. But still, she finishes fourth. Um, clearly not ready, I think, for that level of um, racing. To, to win consistently so I'll probably just drop her out to just trying to get other titles and we'll see if the other girls uh, will have a shot at it anyway solo rider he's up here ten and a half for a long second favorite behind sunny stage and a dollar off wow wow the game has forgotten I've only lost one race with this dude and they still unbelievable unbelievable This guy is still technically in his prime. Like, his stats haven't fallen off at all. Okay, so Sunny Stage is, like, one point faster than us. And... Yeah, Sunny Stage is one point faster than us. Hold on. And six points better than us in stamina. That's literally it as far as the important categories. And six points ahead of us in power. Okay. Like, really? <clears throat> okay. That's all I'm going to say is okay. It's okay. I, I just I don't understand why the game just doesn't seem to ever want to give us favoritism with this guy, and we've lost one race. I, it just it makes no sense, right? It doesn't really make sense at this point. Like if they just think his stats aren't that great, okay, that's weird, but that's fine. If they're not taking past performance into consideration, it, that's what's blowing my mind. Like I feel like that's worked for other horses, and it's not working for him. Like they're it's as if they're completely ignoring his past performances and just still saying yeah he's good but he's still not he's still not that good we've lost one race and we finished in second in that race you know like he's winning <laughs> he's flat out winning he's got five grade ones he's got a GWS turf title to his name he has two titles what do you mean where is Sunny Stage in the lead okay I'm gonna stalk as we always do and we're gonna run our race and we'll see what happens at the end here. I just I still can't help but feel just we're being disrespected because we've been winning and Sunny Stage didn't doesn't look happy up there. I just can't help but feel like we're being disrespected. And it's just like of all the horses, why is it a game choosing to like to uh denounce this horse and to say this horse isn't as good as he is? Solo Rider has been fantastic. <laughs> And the fact that he comes from Moon Trapper, of course, just makes it all the better for me. Just because I loved her, and okay. you know, I got some comments saying oh, I, I was I was a crazy guy for breeding with her. And look at the horse she's given us, with help, yes, but still, like as a broodmare, I don't know, man. And in the home Let's go. No rebel, that's fine. Sunny Stage is holding really long. I don't know if that's gonna work, bro. Maybe? Come on, Solo. Stay strong, brother. Stay strong. Stay strong, man. For a long left to go. Sunny Stage is still there on the inside and closing. Ah, oh, did I get going too soon? Come on, Solo. Kick in. Kick in. Kick in. Finish strong, and we're just going to get it done. Oh, my gosh. I didn't want to overwhip and risk tiring him out more. Just gets it done. Man, oh, man. What a race. Okay, hats off to Sunny Stage on the inside. That horse did not go away, but we should have been the favorite. As we are for every race that we win, we should be the favorite because we're winning. I'm winning with this horse. This is what I talk about for everybody that plays this game. Find your version of this type of horse that you can just win, win, win with. Doesn't matter what you do to get there. Just find that horse. This is exactly that horse for me. It's a solo rider type of horse that I can win with. 
and like I said, the fact that, you know, he's a Moon Trapper foal. But again, I love Moon Trapper. I just, I still to this day, like, I wish I could race with her again. She was such an enjoyable horse to work with considering her stats weren't great. She was from Desert Diver out of Ant B. And she felt a lot like both at some times, but she was just, she was also very unique. So I really enjoyed working with her. And um, that's why I say just whatever horses you use for your pedigrees, you would be surprised. You may get your best horse from a broodmare you wouldn't expect, you know, or, or a stud, you know. I think the most important thing is just to stay optimistic and to try things out. That's where experimentation can be beneficial and pay off. I'm like, I didn't have to retire Moon Trapper for breeding. She only won a couple of grade ones, and most of her wins came from grade twos and grade threes, right? But I'm like, you know what? I want to see if you can still get a really strong, super double S type of horse. Moon Trapper finished with like an A ranking, maybe an S at one point, but she was pretty much an A ranked broodmare. And that's something I really enjoy about this game. That sometimes you pick up those A ranked horses. There are some gems in there. There are some gems that are only A ranked horses that are going to give you double S horses if you use them with the right, you know, studs and brood mares. You just, you obviously have to know what that is. But should I be running him longer distances? Fifty two stand? No, not really. <sighs> well, um, yeah, I'm gonna put him in one more dirt race, eight and a half. Let's see how he handles. In post, and that's the crazy thing. They still will give him an in post for those opens, even though I don't think he's capable of winning grade threes anymore. So, like, I don't, I don't know what they want me to do. <laughs> Six furlongs. Can I race him here? Okay. In fact, that's probably where he should be racing because his speed and stamina are just not there for longer distances. I should probably be racing him like six furlongs to a mile tops. He doesn't have the stamina to run any longer than that. Um, like this guy is 11 for 12 with seven grade ones. I'd like, I don't look, look at the past predictions. Look, we'll go as far back as the London diamond cup in London. That's actually the, the last time I lost with them. And who do we lose to? Don't even remember, but that was the last time I lost with them. After that, he was expected to finish third in the Paris cup. We won it. He was supposed to finish fourth in the Continental Cup. We won that. He was supposed to finish sixth in the Australian Stakes, the sprint race. We finished first. And he was supposed to finish second in the Saint Stakes race, and we won that as well. Like, can, can we give my boy some respect here? Or are we just going to continue to just be in denial? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> Uh, it's a summer sprint title. Who else am I going to put in that race? See, I just, hmm. I don't know who else I would put in that race, so I'm trying to decide if that's the best thing to do. Red Flower, Lawn Champ? He has the endurance for that, but I think I might, you know, I'll run him in the London Prince. Ten furlongs, because he doesn't have the mid-champ title. So we're actually pretty close to that, now I think about it. He has Horse of the Year and GWS Turf, so... Mid-champ title would be nice. But, like, I just... I don't understand the lack of favoritism. They have given worse... They have given horses that I thought were statistically worse and actually not performing as well more favoritism than him. I don't know, man. Moonbee and Awesome Autumn's foal here. Who is Miss Vaporwave? She is, um, 5 for 7... Won that grade two. She's the one I was thinking about where I didn't do well in that uh, grade three. I felt I should have won. So um, she's been doing fine. Still don't know what her speed is yet. It's still annoying. And um, they want her in the young mile cup. And you know what? I, I think that's fair. And I think that's what I kind of said I was going to do if I could bounce back with her. So so can keep the door. She'll be in the Golden Oaks. She's asked ranked in Vivid Eyes. Um, here from Vivid Legend on a Moon Trapper. Fought hard in that second cup. She's got points, but do I think she's going to win it? I don't know. I, I still think she needs to be faster to win it. And she's not there. So I'm going to try to put her in another grade one. Um, yeah, so I don't know what her max distance is. That's annoying, but what's new? So, um, hmm. She can clearly run the distance. So I guess just trying to figure out... Hmm, plenty of races here. 
I like the Lion Oaks for her. The Britain Oaks would be a better race, but I again I don't know where her distance is yet. I think ten and a half is a little bit more suitable. I thought she ran that race fine. She just didn't have the speed. Um and she's still developing, so we'll put her there. Sort of like type procedure. Yeah, she has a she has blinkers on, so like I don't know if having blinkers on really makes a difference or not for all horses. Maybe some horses, there is some way they do benefit in game from it, but I, I can't say it works for everybody. So I just really do it for the for the cosmetics <laughs> and the aesthetic look. I'm looking for a horse. Um, I, I, for whatever reason, I'm drawing a blank on the name, but I will 100% recognize it if I see it in here. Um. Let's see, who's in this? The King Cup Spring... Oh, Indian Lark, right? Yeah, Indian Lark I wanted to have another shot with. Because I didn't do well the last time, so... Oh, that's just like a short sure set in with Thompson. Darn, I was going to try to take that away. Because Loving Carol, I know... Um, uh, Racing Empire, you said you, were, you just used uh, Loving Carol. Night Dialer... E ranked horse in here? Why? Cough E boost. This horse pops up all the time. What is even good about you? Nothing really. And Joe B free. 95 power rating for Joe B free for us. Hmm. I don't know. I like some things about the horse. Don't question it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ride with Joe B free in the King Cup Spring. 16 furlongs, I know it, it's a stretch, but uh, I like some things I see in them, so, you know, I'm going to take a shot. Target required for front for Captain Dolphin. Your stamina is awful. I want to stay. Okay, all these horses have bad stamina. I understand you're running eight furlongs, but uh, 10 deck Cupid. No abilities for you. The pageant. General ending. Bad stamina, but you're fast AF, bro. You know what? Can I ride with you? Over odds, cool. I like goals like that when I do this. Like, no real pressure. So it's like, even if I don't do... Who did I just see? Did I just see... Oh, I thought I saw Electric Arrow. All right. So yeah, I picked up a couple races. And these will be the last ones probably for the uh, the episode. I want to keep this an hour. So you guys can, um again, have more content. Because I'll be busy again with work. I got goals... For this summer and uh, picking up some OT, so so I make sure I give you guys enough content in my hiatus. Let's move on though. Let's move on. We're up here in the King Cup Spring with Joe B. Free. Couldn't ride Indian Lark, so I'm gonna ride the competition, which is Joe B. Free. Never worked with this horse. It pops up all the time. We beat him quite a bit, but I respect him. Um, I like the power rating and I like the heart rating for breeding. That that that's kind of my confession and of course i like the longer distance and the fact that this horse can pretty much run on both surfaces prefers turf but certainly could handle himself on the dirt with closer i like those type of things and with the right brood mare i think he could actually be maybe an okay potentially okay sire i'll have to wait and see i just have an idea what i can maybe get from horses from him if i breed him with the right brood mares back there which um Select few, Butterfly Effect, Cleopatra, Galaxy Star, once we retire those two, I think that'll work. Like, I think we could get really good horses, so hopefully, if I can do well here with Joe B. Free, I know they're not going to give them to me off the first time, they usually don't, but I, I'll, I'll keep an eye on him if I feel like he's a horse that I can work well with to try to get some wins. So yeah, I'm, I'm very curious what Joe B. Free could actually do. Joe B. Free. Long race ahead of us, though. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Kind of cruising along here, nothing happening. <laughs> nothing happening at all. Um, who's the favorite today? Indian Lark, of course. The tracks really look like this, man, in Japan. It's crazy. 
I really like. The turf tracks are quite, they're much different than any of the turf tracks in North America. Um, I feel like there may be more similarities in regards to, like, the grandstand side of things between, like, tracks in Japan, the UK. Um, I think there's more similarities in, in the turf track layouts, I should say, compared to North America. I just feel like we just do our own thing here, and that's good or bad, depending on if you like them or not. I think we have some decent-looking turf tracks, but... I just think the UK and Japan and other countries uh, just put way more time and effort into their tr- turf tracks, mainly because obviously that's that's been the main f- form of horse racing in those countries for a long time, as opposed to here in North America, specifically the States, dirt has been our priority. And we have some really nice dirt tracks, don't get me wrong, but I don't know, it's something about a nice track with turf and green around it that just, I don't know, looks nice to me. So six furlongs left to go. It's been nothing happening. Couple horses moving around here. Joe, be free. Not happy we're running as slow as we are, but this is where we need to be, and this is working for him for the time being. No revolution today. They don't really need it. If I get one, cool. Like, trying to get one every time, I don't know. I I just think just trying to run the horse as perfectly as you can puts you in a better spot to get a revo as opposed to trying to think about actually getting one. Okay, we got some work to do here with Joe. Got some work. Got some work. We have to turn up with him and let's see how he runs down in the stretch here. Supposed to finish fifth with Joe B. Lark. Indian Lark is gone. I just say Joe B. Lark. Joe B. Free, I meant. Indian Lark is gone, and to be honest, if I was going to catch that horse, I would have needed to get a much earlier jump. Horse is still fighting really good here in the deep stretch, but um, looks like it's actually going to be fifth. Yeah, quite literally going to be fifth. Indian Lark, just that much better. And granted, Joby Lark, he doesn't have good speed or good stamina at the moment. But, again, for what it's worth, that power rating keeps him alive in the deep stretch. Course loss we had to take, not a great stretch spurt run. But you know what? I like Joe B. Free. So, if I see him pop up again, I would definitely like to uh, get another ride. Hopefully, maybe in an easier race. We're not beating those horses with him. We're up in the Britain 1000 Gs with Little Vixen trying to get her her first grade one. She's second favorite behind Sly Attack. Spiritual Wolf. I just love the name of that horse. Uh, where is it? The two horse. No, three horse Spiritual Wolf. What are your stats? Good power rating, actually. Good toughness. Not a good heart rating. Turf and dirt preference. No abilities. Obviously not a horse I would probably use, but, you know. Beautiful gray here. Regent Doctor. And you literally have, like, the same exact stats with probably, what, no abilities? Yeah. You are just a clone of Spiritual Wolf. Gosh, I didn't realize how many horses they clone in this game. It's kind of funny. Little Vixen, as you can see, she's still developing. Still don't know her stamina. She's fast enough to win. Gotta see if we can get it done here. Knowing her stamina would be nice. The main stats I always want to know on my horses initially. Speed, stamina, power, and heart. Those four stats I need to know above and beyond. If a horse is giving me an issue every race, I can probably figure out they have a bad temper rating. I don't need to actually see what the number is. But I need to see the speed, the stamina, the power, and the heart ratings. And then their leg type. The distance, you can figure that out most most of the time. Leg type is extremely important, and I think the speed and stamina are. Gotta understand whether or not you can run your horse harder than you think you can. A horse with 47 stamina in a 10 furlong race would probably not survive if he ran that horse as if it was in a 6 furlong dash, right? So I think just knowing those categories are pretty important. Now, I think she's fast enough to win here. 85 in this game is a fast enough speed rating where, where if you're on the right horse and you know what you're doing, you can certainly win. It's we, We've done that before. Who is that? Grave Ransom. Imagine that horse has set the pace that far out in front and manages to hold on and actually win the race like that. I'm looking for the second. Or I'm looking for the actual favorite Cobb. Who? Sly Attack. Where are you at? Okay. While you're out there. Okay. Okay, little Vixen. She's starting to kind of get on a little bit of a roll here, which I'm just going to let her run naturally. I don't think she has bad stamina. She shouldn't. Got to go now. No Rebo. 
she kicks off. Two furlongs left to go. Hopefully she's got enough to hang in there. The favorite is running up on us. She's still clear, though. Little Vixen's still clear by a couple of lengths. Sly Attack has a lot of work to do. Approaching half a furlong, and Little Vixen, she actually looks like she's going to roll on to win the Britain 1000 Gs as she clears this field by more than two lengths. Let's go, my girl. And that's her first grade one. Fantastic effort there. Fantastic effort from Diamond Plant out of Pink Gemstone. That is very reminiscent of what Pink Gemstone could do in some of these sprinting races. That is very, very reminiscent of that. She gets her first win at eight furlongs. Let's go. Hip, hip, hooray for Little Vixen. Beautiful run there. She held out really strong. I didn't know how she would do with an approaching sly attack, and she held that off, rejected the challenge, and was able to win that cleanly by two and a half lengths, like I said. So awesome win there for Little Vixen. Really, really happy with that performance. And we may have ourselves a little sprinter. So, she's actually a horse I feel comfortable tossing into the GWS Sprint, 100%. We're moving on to General Ending. This is a horse I decided I wanted to ride with. Eighth favorite in this Britain 2000 Gs. Um, good speed, not great stamina. Not good power. And not a good heart rating. And no abilities. So, I really just looked at this horse because of the speed. Okay. <laughs> Let's see how he does. Just curious. I mean, he's really just like a slightly... I mean, he's pretty much Jaden's champion when I think about it. With slightly better stamina. What, seven or eight points more than what Jaden had? That's it. <laughs> so, we'll see. Gosh, I really wish Jaden's champion would have worked out. I just cannot believe they just gave him 40, like, two stam. It just don't even make... 97 speed with 42 stam. What do they want him running? Three furlong time trials? Like, you know. <laughs> Even being that fast. Like, any semi-competent horses with slightly better stamina are in the same speed figures are going to last longer than him. Like, it just wasn't going to work out for us like that. So, yeah. Really a bummer, man. <laughs> really a bummer. But yeah, he's just really a slightly better Jaden's champion. But I wanted to see um, what he was like, I guess. Okay, get him going now. Let's see if you have enough to sprint for two furlongs. He's holding off. Still quite a ways to go. General ending still in the lead. I'm kind of surprised. He doesn't even have a good power rating. This is probably going to hurt him a lot. It's not hurting him a ton. He's still staying strong here. General Ending is going to get to the line here and finish third. Oh, fourth. Wow. That's not terrible. That's not terrible for a horse with no stamina and really nothing else good except for the speed. Not bad. Not bad. Of course, like I said, you know, don't want another Jaden's champion as far as for breeding, but I wanted to see how fast he really was. Is able to keep up there. Major River, she's up in the Louisville Oaks. I said, why not? And fortunately, they gave us a 14th or higher goal, which means we can finish wherever and be fine. So I can just run this race with her and just have fun. That was the point. I was hoping we were going to be like 14th. If it was going to say like a top 13 or top 12, then that'd be more pressure because she's nowhere near ready to win these type of races yet. If we do win them, it's a perfect storm, rich strike type of day. That's basically what it is. Like, she is that type of horse, but she's not at that level at all yet. She still has two to three years of development. So, running in the Louisville Oaks here, there's absolutely zero pressure. And uh, I can just see how she performs. My goal is always to try to beat a couple of horses still, just to see if we can do that early. That always translates to winning eventually once the horse's stats get better, but... We'll see. We're off in a Louisville Oaks. And uh, that's going to be the seven horse going out to the lead there. And that is Radiant Oasis taking charge. Settling in second is Clear Jewel, the favorite. And we're just going to worry about our race mainly with Major River. Again, the goal is just to beat a couple of horses by the end. 
But if she finishes in 14th again, I don't have to worry about anything. We'll still hit our goal, and the game will still be happy. <laughs> She's really, really easy to work with. I am quite impressed. Not that I ever thought she wouldn't be. I guess um, she's more of a horse that I would like to actually play with in this game than I thought. <laughs> it's like the irony. A horse I've talked so much about actually turns out to be a horse that I... This is the ideal type of horse I like. Doesn't give me an issue. Rides really nice and easy for most of the race. Really responsive when need be. And that's really it. I'm going to get two sevens here. I don't know where to start my spurt. We're going to go now. No Rebo. Let's see how she runs off the corner of the Louisville Oaks. She's up here. She, she's got plenty of stamina left to run here. Plenty of stamina left to run. Gosh, with better stats. With better stats, she's ripping off at turn four and probably fighting for the lead right now. She's only ahead of three horses. Rest of the field kind of tiring. She's going to get stretch burst. Wow, Major River is actually pretty nice in here. Yeah, she's only going to beat two horses. But still, a really, really easy ride. And, I, that again, she's 40s and 50s, people. Like, she's not going to win that race unless I get a perfect roll with her. Still say be on the spurt. Like, you know, probably just running her on the outside like that. And maybe getting her started a tad bit too late. I'm happy with the performance because it just shows that she's going to be capable of winning those races once her stats are where they need to be. So, I think until then I am just going to stick her to opens because I would like to stack wins with her I feel like I always neglect to do that with horses so crazy hunter three-year-old filly she's up in the Louisville Derby aka the Kentucky Derby actually has a chance to win here today behind wing page it's going to be a tough horse to beat we're actually co-favorites I just realized we're both going off at three dollars and sixty cents to win basically so beauty oh, gosh beauty value also here 30 cents off yeah it's gonna be a tough derby um, lovely March. Yeah, not really worried about that horse. Frugal plan could maybe play spoiler, but yeah, crazy hunter, beauty value, and wing page. Those three are definitely to watch out for in the Derby. Crazy hunter is our gal, and um, I, gosh, I don't know what the pace is going to be like. So uh, that'll dictate whether I actually keep her in first or settle her to running as a proceeder. We'll see. We shall see. It's nice to have several dirt horses now that we can actually run. I think they're all fillies, and then Burning Wind's still the only colt, but we have a couple of dirt horses. And finally going to start working on some serious dirt pedigrees, because we haven't done that in a while. Gosh, Bolero was like literally like the last... Con I mean, Bolero, as far as like a dirt horse original... What is it? He 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 was the last best one. Like that's too too long of not having like a really strong dirt original since him. Other dirt horses we've had, they won a couple of grade ones, but I still don't think they had the the two years that he had. I still think as a dirt original that we have produced, he had a really strong two years. And obviously became a favorite because of just how well he did. Other dirt horses just haven't done the same that we've gotten. Is there any front runners in this field? No, all proceeders. So we knew you were pretty much right where we actually need to be. Crazy Hunter's got to take advantage here. I have inside trip on the rail. That's always nice in this game. I know in real life it depends on the track. Sometimes the inside's a little bit tough. Um, sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. Like, every track is different. I think I was talking about it in the live stream. Every track is different, so sometimes how you run a horse all depends on that particular track and where the best part of it is. Crazy Hunter, she's been comfortable the whole way. She's got plenty of stamina. I, I have no worries we can really pull this off here. Just kind of going to get her on the move. We're going to hug this rail really tightly here. Now we're going to go ahead and send her on the run. Down the stretch we come with Crazy Hunter. She's got plenty of stamina left to run, and the rest of the field is going to have to do a lot of work, I think, to catch us. A furlong left to go in the Kentucky Derby. Three-year-old Philly Crazy Hunter has absolutely no challenges, no rivals today, and she's going to absolutely clear this and win it easy by more than five lengths, probably. 
Maybe they'll give her four. Wow. I, I said it. I'm like, why not put her in this race? I think she's certainly capable of getting it done. And, man, look at that. <laughs> Here's her Kentucky Derby winner, and it's a Philly. Crazy Hunter getting her second grade one victory, and it happens at the Derby. We don't often have the opportunity to win the Derby in this game because I just haven't had the dirt horses capable of doing it. Or we've always been in extremely tough fields. Crazy Hunter, she clears that exactly by five lanes over lovely uh, March and Wing Page. And uh, wow, what a what a run from her. Of course, having that inside trip always helps on the rail, and we didn't have anybody to challenge us for the lead. If there was another front runner or two, that could have made that race a little bit different. But as the only front runner, everybody else proceeders and I'm back. We get that win. So Little Vixen wins her first grade one in the Britain 1000. And uh, Crazy Hunter goes ahead and wins the Louisville Derby. And then the other races were, I mean, kind of just whatever races. Major River wasn't going to win the Oaks. Uh, General Ending wasn't going to win that 2000 Gs, despite how well he fought. And uh, Joe B. Free, not fast enough to win that King Cup. So I think those horses finished where they were, and we won where we needed to. So I'm happy with that, and I think that is a good way to go ahead and end today. Appreciate you guys for the love and support on this channel. We'll be back with some more Gallup Racer 2004 gameplay here soon. I'm just going to keep rolling, and we'll go ho go on uh, to get to the summer and really start the GWS hunt. I still don't even know who I'm putting in the sprint as of yet. I think I want to try a little Vixen out. I think she's fast enough for it. Um, Pink Gemstone never had the chance to win the GWS sprint, so it would be nice if her daughter could uh, obviously go on to do that. That will be the goal with her. The turf still kind of wide open, and then in the dirt, I think we have a couple of uh, of the girls um, that could definitely run that. So that'll be for next time. Until then, though, horse racing, Emerson out. Later, game, Taz. Day. I'll see you later, and goodbye.